Zimbabwe's main poli opposition political parties are holding rallies and other campaigns ahead of the general election this year. Although the actual date of the election has yet to be announced, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has stated that it will either take place in July or August. Let's speak now to advocate Fadzai Mahere. She speaks for the Citizens Coalition for Change, uh, an opposition political party in Zimbabwe. Fadzai, thank you very much for availing yourself. Perhaps Let's we'll start with an update, right? Any word from um, the ZEC? Well, there hasn't been any word from the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, but constitutionally the big issue at the moment is delimitation. Zimbabwe is due for a delimitation and a redrawing of the boundaries for the election. And as the Triple C, we've been extremely concerned about uh, the lack of transparency around the process. For example, Parliament is supposed to sit tomorrow to consider the report. However, um, the, the sitting has been uh, scheduled to be a virtual one, which is something we don't expect. Uh, when we're dealing with something of this magnitude and importance. I mean, it's happened in the past uh, that sometimes the, the internet connection is not working well. So we, we do have uh, some concern around the process leading up to the election. We also have issues around the fact that, uh, you know, some of our campaign activities have been uh, banned by ZANU-PF, uh, weaponizing state institutions. Uh, our members continue to be persecuted and incarcerated. Honorable Job Sikala has been in prison for 240 days with uh, no trial. We also have concerns around the fact that a lot of our members, especially in the rural areas, are being terrorized. And so, you know, citizens are hugely expectant around this election and Zanu PF is running scared. Um, but we remain, uh, you know, keen and confident that we're going to be able to win Zimbabwe for change in 2023. Hmm. Uh, you mentioned the rural vote and Zimbabwe, if you will, uh, is a tale of two cities where you've got the rural and the urban vote with the rural holding uh, much power um, as well. And so tell us about what is happening in that space. You speak of intimidation of members and of this might be um, what triggering, especially given the era of uh, Robert Mugabe. So we have consistently said as a movement that we seek to uplift the lives of every single Zimbabwean, including those in rural areas. Uh, it's a matter of public record that 49% of Zimbabwe's population lives in extreme poverty, and the bulk of those are found in rural areas. So we've mounted uh, a concerted grassroots mobilization campaign in all rural areas and all provinces in Zimbabwe, and ZANU-PF has uh, reacted, obviously, with violence, which is something that we budgeted for and expected. But what's really interesting this time around as we approach the election is that even citizens in rural areas are ready for change. They're desirous of change. And zanu -PF's backlash has been to burn our members' homes, to ban them uh, you know, from meeting, to deny them food aid and humanitarian assistance, including uh, state inputs uh, for farming, and to also weaponize traditional leaders. But we continue to campaign in these areas because this, it's an organic campaign. Campaign, the citizens themselves uh, want change. And so we've been working, obviously, uh, in unconventional ways, though constitutional and lawful, of course, to ensure that we mobilize them and educate them that their vote is their secret, that, you know, elections work and voting is the only way we can bring about change in Zimbabwe. But obviously, the violence and panic of ZANU-PF tells a strong story. They know they've lost popular support. There's no political party that believes that it's got the support of the people uh, that burns their homes, that uses violence, that beats people up, uh, you know, that has soldiers running patrols and including at night, as we've seen uh, in a number of areas. We know that PF, uh, you know, ha can see the writing on the wall that change is coming. Hmm. Um, let's take a look at what um, the ZANU-PF has done um, since 2018 when they came into power. Uh, perhaps let's start with this um, paying reparations to white farmers who lost their land in the country. Uh, that decision was announced what, back in 2020. Has anything uh, materialized off of that? 
Well, unfortunately, it was only a public statement, but all uh, commercial farmers will confirm that they never received this 3.5 billion that was announced. It was just one of ZANU-PF's many empty promises. The Constitution of Zimbabwe does say that uh, former farmers who were, uh, you know, forcibly removed from their land are entitled to compensation for improvements, and ZANU-PF made the undertaking. But five years down the line, absolutely no movement uh, has been made in that regard. Just last week, we had fresh invasions taking place uh, and white farmers were being removed once again even with the black farmers uh, you know the indigenous farmers that had come on and, and had started to farm we see again a complete disregard for property rights by zanu pf there's no security of tenure once someone is just found to be out of favor or not doing the bidding of zanu pf their land holding is weaponized and they're forcibly removed from the lands the same has happened in other sectors as well such as mining where there's absolutely no security of tenure. And as the Citizens Coalition for Change, we've said repeatedly that our government will ensure that we sanitize the land holding process, we respect property rights, we give title deeds to farmers, we ensure that everybody is secure on their land so that we can invest in the land so that they can start uh, using their land as security to get uh, you know, money and loans uh, so that they can farm. You know, it's no secret that Zimbabwe has the highest food inflation in the world, and this is a country that used to be the best, the, the breadbasket uh, of the region and indeed the continent. Uh, the World Bank just put out that assessment that we've got the highest food prices. This is obviously going to lead to additional food insecurity for the citizens, all because of poor governance by ZANU-PF and plain incompetence. So his record, uh, Mr. Mnangagwa, and his party ZANU-PF is a treacherous one in Zimbabwe across all sectors. On the economy during the State of the Nation address in 2018, the President of Zimbabwe said um, we will be united by our vision to be a middle income economy with a per capita income of 3,500 US dollars, increased investment, decent jobs, broad based empowerment, free from poverty and corruption by 2030. Is Zimbabwe on course? Absolutely not. I mean, it's no secret uh, that half the population, one in two Zimbabweans, according to the World Bank, uh, are living in extreme poverty. So he says he would create better lives for the people. Instead, he's created more poor people. We've got the highest inflation, hyperinflation rates in the world. How do we break hyperinflation records twice in almost one decade? It's simply, uh, you know, pure incompetence on their part, coming to corruption, according to their own official figures, figures from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, Zimbabwe loses over $1.8 billion uh, to corruption every single year. And there's been no accountability uh, for those who continue to loot and plunder our resources. Uh, it's a matter of public record, and Minister Mtuli Nguwe, who's the Minister of Finance, confirmed that Zimbabwe loses over $100 million United States dollars every single month to gold smuggling. And yet when gold smugglers are caught red-handed on camera because the Azanu PF, they are let off the hook. So their record on corruption is again absolutely terrible. When it comes to the state of our public hospitals, Zimbabwe does not have, uh, you know, paracetamol. Paracetamol costs one cent uh, per tablet and we don't even have that very basic necessity in our hospitals. There's no, uh, you know, water. There's no electricity. Zimbabwe has chronic load shedding. You I think you've got load shedding in South Africa, but you, you don't even know the meaning of the word compared to what we're experiencing in Zimbabwe. People are experiencing up to 20 to 22 hours of load shedding, including during the day, and this is crippled industry. Uh, even if you look at our currency, Zimbabwe does not have a stable currency. The Zimbabwe dollar is not tradable anywhere in the world. Uh, the Zimbabwe dollar has you know, multiple rates. There's a currency crisis. Uh, we've got a dollarized economy, but a fake forex auction system because of the confusion in terms of uh, the economic fundamentals and even the budget, it was purportedly in Zimbabwe dollars, but everybody knows that we don't speak of uh, Zimbabwe dollars in Zimbabwe. Everything has got a US dollar cost to it, including government services and taxes. So you can see that this is a, a regime that has completely failed, uh, you know, at grade seven, which is primary school level. Zimbabwe used to have uh, universal access to, to primary education, but now we've got a situation situation where just in 2022, 60% of those of the children who sat for their grade 7, their primary public exam failed. How do you have over 50% of the population, 
spent, failing. This is because teachers are underpaid, there's underinvestment in schools, children are learning under trees, they don't have electricity, the economy is completely broken, so they don't have the means to go to school, they can't afford to pay school fees. This government has three times over the last three years, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 even, a promise was made that there would be free education. We've gotten all the way to the fifth year of Mr. Mnangagwa's tenure, and still, uh, you know, Zimbabweans cannot afford the cost of education. Right now, schools are about to start on Monday and Tuesday. School fees are paid in, in United States dollars, and most Zimbabweans are number one unemployed. And it's important to highlight that uh, Mr. Mnangagwa has had a terrible uh, record uh, of, of, of failure to attend to job creation. Zimbabwe's unemployment rate is over 80% according to uh, you know, uh, recorded figures in the data. And so you see that Zimbabweans, even civil servants, are barely earning 200 US dollars. So Zimbabweans are living in poverty, and the citizens are sick and tired, uh, you know, and they continue to demand uh, ethical leaders, a competent government uh, led by advocate Nelson Chamis and the Citizens Coalition for Change. What will make him different from current day leadership? I think you'd appreciate with everything that you have said, people are either traumatized, um, you know, or despondent. And so it is in the best interest of the people of Zimbabwe that indeed a change does come. But why should they even consider um, Nelson Chamisa as an alternative will make him different. Well, the first uh, thing is that he has put forward an alternative policy plan, uh, and he's given highlights of it throughout last year. We were formed uh, on the 24th of January last year, uh, but we've got a new Great Zimbabwe Blueprint that sets out our big vision for Zimbabwe and our plan across all sectors and industries to uh, you know, ensure that Zimbabwe becomes a country where every citizen can access dignity, prosperity, uh, and freedom. Uh, we have also uh, put together a team Team, uh, that is inspirational, it's competent, it's got ethical leaders, and we are the only competent alternative that actually, number one, has a connection uh, to the citizens across all provinces. Our key message last year was that we, we want citizens to come back to the center of all decision making uh, in Zimbabwe so we can build a new great Zimbabwe that we can all be proud of, where people aren't starving, where people aren't suffering, where we don't have potholes uh, every two meters with people can go to a hospital and get care, where doctors, nurses and teachers earn a living wage, where people have access to housing, where people can eat a decent meals every single day, where people can work and earn proper money. And uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa, our chain champion chief and our president, has said repeatedly uh, and in setting out our alternative policies, even on energy, he set out a detailed plan that Zimbabwe is not in this crisis because of anything else other than incompetence. The last time a, a you know, Kariba Dam was attended to was in the 50s. And since uh, the Rhodesian government, there hasn't been a clear plan to d address the energy and electricity crisis. It's just fumbling after fumbling, trying to import from ESCOM, trying to stitch from here, blaming it on climate change. And, and the money that's pegged for solar farms is stolen by that very same Zanu PF who only know looting and corruption. So the citizens' hope is firmly in the Citizens' Coalition for Change because we do promise and have demonstrated uh, you know, ethical leadership on a number of fronts. We also have a heart for the suffering masses. You know, we don't coerce people. We don't use violence. We don't need to ban rallies. Uh, just this uh, last week, you know, Zama Piaf was saying that they would ban the music of Winky D, who's a musician who just thinks about, you know, what every single citizen is, is you know, experiencing the suffering, the hunger, the poverty, the injustice. Uh, and yet they want to silence him. You'll never get that under a triple C government. There will be space for every single Zimbabwean, including those who are critical. And this message has landed. Uh, in rural areas and urban areas, with young people, with old people, with professionals, across the cross-section of all uh, the citizenry, everybody's geared up for 2023. Everybody knows that the only way to bring about change constitutionally is by voting, by ensuring that we vote big, by ensuring that we uh, you know, turn out and ensure that we defend the vote, uh, and make sure that we, we 
have a better shot uh, in the future. We've been the sick man of the region for too long. Obviously, we've carried out a global advocacy campaign to SADC, including South Africa, Zambia, Malawi, and a number of other countries. We've carried it to the African Union as well. But we're also very conscious of the fact that none but ourselves. It's going to take citizens mm -hmm. to register to vote en masse, to turn out on voting day en masse, and ensure that we defend uh, the vote by ensuring that we, you know, organize and mobilize everybody for change. For Zai, I'll tell you, there's something definitely happening in Southern Africa, and that something is not pretty, because it is Zambia as well that is putting their electricity woes down to uh, Kariba Dam as we speak. Load shedding has been ramped up in South Africa to stage four. So it will indeed take none other than ourselves. Thank you very much. For Zai Maher, spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change.